The NFL Draft, which happens in New York City, gives a considerable rundown of college football players an opportunity to be drafted by an organization and afterward vie for a spot to maybe one day become a starter. 1. In contrast to Major League Baseball MLB, and the National Basketball Association NBA, altogether for a player to be qualified for the draft, he should be three years out of high school. 2. There are seven rounds of the draft, which is the reason the draft requires a few days to finish. 3. The absolute last pick of the draft, who is number 256, is generally known as Mr. Unimportant. 4. In the 17th round of the 1972 draft, 64-year-old entertainer, John Wayne, was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons then Commissioner Pete Rozelle denied the pick. 5. There is consistently talk about which year had the best class of draft picks, yet, the 1964 NFL draft delivered 10 future Hall of Fame players, quarterback Roger Stoback, running backs Charlie Taylor, Paul Warfield, and Leroy Kelly, wide receiver Bounce Hayes, offensive lineman Sway Earthy, defensive end Carl Eller, defensive backs Mel Renfro and Paul Krause, and pound Dave Wilcox, and one future Hall of Fame coach, Bill Parcells. 6. There has just been one quarterback drafted in the first round who turned into an All-Pro, Peyton Manning. 7. The New York Jets and the St. Louis Rams both had 12 picks in the 2014 draft. 8. There are four organizations that have never had the first pick of the draft pick, Seattle Seahawks, Denver Broncos, Jacksonville Jaguars, and Baltimore Ravens. 9. In the historically first NFL draft, in 1936, the Philadelphia Eagles picked a fullback by the name of Jay Berwanger. Yet, one will never see his name in any NFL record book since he requested a lot of cash and never played in the NFL. 10. Bo Jackson, the superstar in two sports in football and baseball, was drafted by two organizations in two various years. Now let's talk about some other bizarre facts some of the most hardcore NFL fans don't know. The Patriots football team were nearly named the Bay State Patriots. The Boston Patriots, as they were called then, were a traveling team in their first decade in the AFL, first performing at Fenway Park, Harvard Arena, Boston College's Alumni Stadium, and Braves Field. When the organization moved to Foxborough in 1971, the owner Billy Sullivan wanted another team name to go with the new stadium. He finally settled on the Bay State Patriots, out of respect for the entire state. The name endured for a month, as the NFL clearly didn't value what the initials of the team's new name would be. Consider the big picture. From that point on, it was the Patriots who were the name of the football team. On the off chance that you wanted the Packers of Green Bay season tickets today, you'll need to stand by for about 1,000 years to get your tickets. Contingent upon which reports you believe, the Pack's waiting list has roughly 86,000 individuals on it. With less than 100 surrendering their tickets each year, by all measures the numbers say it will require 955 years to make it to the top, without a moment to spare to see Brett Favre's next return. Wilson, which has been the selective producer of NFL football since 1941, produces 4,000 balls each day, or one for each of the intercepts Eli Manning ever threw in his career. A lone cow hide, which comes from cows in Kansas, Iowa, and Nebraska, makes 10 footballs. Furthermore, there are 16 ribbon openings on an NFL football, however only one trim. Richard Nixon once disclosed to Rune Arledge that when Frank Gifford was with the football giants of New York, he would welcome Nixon over to his townhouse for mixed drinks and parties after the games. Just one NFL organization has ever three-peated, subsequently baffling Pat Riley, and not even once during this Super Bowl generation. Vince Lombardi's Green Bay Packers of 1966-68 won three NFL titles in succession, yet no organization has at any point pulled off that accomplishment in this Super Bowl generation. Regardless of the misnomer that the NFL can only play on Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays, the organization once played games every day of the week. There was the unforgettable 2010 snow game on Tuesday night in Philadelphia, the Wednesday night season opener in 2012 that was moved to not medal with Barack Obama's acknowledgement speech at the DNC conference, every one of those horrible Thursday night games that are the worst thing about the NFL schedule, not the Thanksgiving day of course, and the various Friday night games that were moved for climate purposes and games that were played on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and even on New Year's Eve. An NBC worker once ran on the field, possibly, to upset the 1958 NFC title game, however, he had a valid justification. There's a legend, which has generally been confirmed, that an NBC worker ran onto the field during the well-known 1958 NFL title game on the grounds that a television link had become unplugged as a result of the rowdy group while Johnny Unitas was driving the Colts on what turned out to be the match's most critical drive. Stan Rotkovich, an analyst, clearly ran onto the field, playing an alcoholic to upset the game and give NBC time to fix the link. 
As per his account, Johnny Unitas didn't accept the story since he figured nobody might actually act that drunk so well. The Super Bowl prize cost approx $25,000, how small is that amount? That is somewhat the same income that Indamakan Sue is bringing in each hour of this NFL season. The most established record in the NFL record book is perhaps the most celebrated, Ernie Nevers scored 40 PTS in a game in 1929, getting 6 TDs and 4 added points. Gail Sayers was included in the Hall of Fame when he was only 34. Prior to Michael Jordan, there was another celebrated Chicago flu game on November 20, 1977, the day he broke O.J. Simpson's record for most running yards in one game, Walter Payton was fighting that season's cold virus. I had hot and cold sweats on Wednesday and felt very powerless, he said at that point. I didn't think I could play. You put your confidence in God and he'll always do what's best for you. I trusted he would do so today, and he did. He ran for 275 yards on 40 carries in a contest that helped the Bears to advance to the playoffs that season. Joe Gibbs is the lone coach, mentor in NFL history to average more than one season playoffs win in 10 plus seasons of coaching. The ex-Redskins coach had 17 playoff wins in his 16 years and 17 in his original 12 with the Redskins. John Harbaugh presently has nine season playoffs wins in seven full seasons. Both Bill Walsh and Jimmy Johnson had 10 playoff wins in 10 seasons as well. The University of Georgia coaching staff loved the Packers logo tremendously, the coach, mentor Vince Dooley even borrowed the logo for the Bulldogs caps. The UGA legend utilized a dark G, with a white oval for the first plan, which has for the most part remained the equivalent to the Packers throughout its current use. In the current NFL drafts, there's just been one year in which a quarterback hasn't been chosen in the initial two rounds. That came in 1988 when Tom Tooper and Chris Chandler were taken with the 68th and 76th picks, separately. Tooper just began 13 games at quarterback, at that point changed into one of the game's top punters. Chandler later took the Falcons to the Super Bowl. Carl Weathers Apollo Creed, played two years with the Raiders of Oakland in the mid-1970s. At that point he finished his short NFL stint to become the boxing champion of the world, beating Rocky Balboa, then losing to Balboa, running on the seashore in high socks with him, helping Balboa beat Clubber Lang, and afterward, unfortunately losing his life to Ivan Drago in Las Vegas in an exhibition match. Fred Dreyer of the television series Hunter is the lone player with two safeties in a single NFL game. Those two safeties were adequate to rank him tied for no. 22 on the all-time NFL list. The record for most in a career is four, held by three players, including Jared Allen. The total crowd for the first ever broadcast in 1939 of an NFL football match up was just 500 viewers. This year's Super Bowl was around 112,200,500 viewers. These are just some of the bizarre facts about the NFL that most diehard fans don't know or forgot about. Success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Booker T. Washington. Anything that gets your blood racing is probably worth doing. Hunter S. Thompson. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe down below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Until next time, this is Bizarre Sports.